You would think clouds of caddis and copious cutthroat would coax crowds of casual anglers in from every corner of the country. But in the shadow of giants and in the heart of rattlesnake country, this is no place for the faint of heart. Luckily for me, the natives still swim strong in the endless blue and I'm used to a bit of risk. This is an evening fly fishing eastern Idaho. With work wrapped up for the afternoon, I was fairly certain no one would miss me. So it was time to hit the road and head east for the night. Now, the valley was hot. The blacktop, it was telling me that it was very much summer, but the snow-capped silhouette of the Tetons in the distance told me cold water, it wouldn't be too hard to find. And I'm not talking about the drift boat choked waters of the Henry's Fork or the Snake. No, no, no. I was in search of real solitude. The only thing in my way was high gas prices and the residual tourist traffic leaving the park. So I patiently gripped up my peanut butter, honey, and pretzel sandwich and watched the hay sway all the way to my canyon access point. So with the first of many evening sessions now just a short walk away, I took a deep breath of cut crop and pine and got geared up. It was still a warm one on the outskirts of the rim, but it wouldn't take long to slide into the shade and begin the downhill descent. And I've said this before, but I will say it again and again, studying maps never does the landscape justice. Once you finally get your boots on the ground, things will always be longer and steeper. Holy cow, getting out of here is gonna suck. The vertical drop on this poor excuse for a trail had a very similar trajectory to the Gunnison Gorge in Colorado, but luckily for me, it might have only been a quarter the size and we made it to the river in no time. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my first rattler right there. Holy cow. That's why you should be real careful when you come down to the canyon. Good golly, Miss Molly. Thought one of you might be sitting in there. All right, I'm heading down. Don't lose you. Yeah, there we go. Well, ooh, that is one beautiful fish, and I think he is more than ready to get back. So let's send him back in the drink. I kept pushing upstream without much luck, but as the shadow of the canyon crept, I felt like it was only a matter of time before the fish would turn. I meandered up a side channel, and it didn't take long to spot a nice trout holding in the back of a pool. That was so sick. Yes! Yeah, baby, let's go! Hopper muncher! Wow, that is an absolutely gorgeous fish. That's amazing. See you, buddy. Alrighty, that fish is back. And I got two quick things, so bear with me here. First and foremost, I saw that fish eat. So I've always kind of got my eyes on the water. And as I was approaching this next run up and over this log, I saw one come up and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna back off real quick. I positioned myself behind the rock to give myself some cover so, you know, he didn't see me. First cast in there, he came up and crushed the chubby. I mean, that was that was textbook. Right as the sun is starting to come over the canyon, hopefully the evening bite's starting to ramp up. We're looking at just after 5.30. And yeah, I mean, that was, that was awesome. And what makes it even better, the second thing I'd like to mention is that was our first trout on the new rod. 
So Postfly sent over a bunch of new rods they wanted me to test out, and this is an eight foot five weight, but it's a glass. And my goodness gracious, it casts like butter. And I mean, that was that was a ton of fun. So we had the honor and the privilege to take the plastic off, and you know the deal, Chris and this bad boy into our arsenal. And what do we got here? Can we get around it without touching it? I don't wanna, I don't wanna touch you in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Think you wanted that? Oh, all right. See ya. Oh, you're gorgeous, buddy. This an ant munch and beauty. Yes! Yes! Dude, let's go! <laughs> Much obliged, sir. Much obliged. Mr. Ant Muncher. Well, that was easily our best fish of the day, and he fought back fine. He actually jetted off, man. These, these Western fishmen, they are floppy. But I want to take a minute and kind of talk. So again, I apologize if I'm rambling, but I think it's important. I want, I want to talk about my rig. So. On my five weight, I've got an ant and a chubby, essentially a hopper and an ant. And why I'm doing this, it's, it's more of a prospecting rig. So I don't know what the heck is going on right now in the West. I just touched down, and especially in these isolated canyons, I mean, there's no telling. But what I do know is that these cutthroat are opportunistic. They're gonna grab whatever comes by them because growing seasons are short. I mean, it's mid-July and it's still kind of chilly. Like it's, it's not like summer is in full force yet. But what I wanna say is that an ant and a hopper is perfect because right now, if you can kinda of hear over the sound of the current, there are, there are grasshoppers everywhere and I've seen ants around. So this is at least something that the fish are seeing. You know, We don't know if there's caddis hatching, we don't know if there's salmon flies hatching or stone flies, whatever it might be, but we do know there are grasshoppers and ants present in the system. So far, that's what they're munching on, man. That's, oh, it's so good. Now with this being an evening session on a new river, I didn't want to push the envelope all that hard. I made my way up to a difficult rock pool that seemed to be holding a lot of fish, and I did my best to use the length of my rod and reach of my arm to get a proper drift, but with slippery rocks and fast current, I got one fish out of there and decided to head back downstream to finish out the night. Seeing this short section of river transform in a matter of hours was such a treat. Most of my bigger adventures involve crushing the morning bite and hiking out as the sun goes down. It is so seldom that I get to see clouds of hatching bugs accumulate in the golden glow. I definitely could have capitalized on a few more bites, that's for dang sure, but at this point, every fish, no matter how small, was just extra gravy on top of a successful evening session. With the sun setting fast, I knew I only had time for one more run to fish. Following the trail down, it was a nice looking run, and I finally found a snake that wouldn't kill me. This must have been a good omen to end my evening session. Oh my gosh, I had two fish on. Yeah! <laughs> Holy cow! There we go, now we're cooking, baby! The whiteys are coming out! Oh, hell yeah, dude! I don't know, I think you wanted that? Oh, come on, buddy.
Now there might be a few of you out there who are wondering what the heck that fish was, and hey, I don't blame you. Those are mountain whitefish, and before I came out west, I had never even really heard of them, caught them, none of that. But they're native to the western United States, and I don't know, it's super cool to come to a watershed like this and be able to catch native cutthroat and native whitefish all on the same flies too. I mean, they call them bycatch, I, I don't know. I like them, they taste great, and they fight like the Dickens, man, that's awesome. But uh, our day's winding down. I'm thinking we might, uh, you know, give it a few more casts, but otherwise we need to boot scoop boogie our way out of here. Oh. <laughs> well, the whitefish popped off and I got the cutty. That's pretty funny, man. Thanks, little guy. You are beautiful. Alright, it's time for the dreaded hike out of here. I kind of ran down it uh, this uh, afternoon, early evening, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a grind to get out of here, I think. The hike out did kind of suck, but that's just part of it. I can always rack it up to good training for trips to come, but for only a few hours on the river, what more could you ask for? I think I could have done without the snake, especially on my first adventure, but I suppose they are just another thing I need to get used to when fishing in the West. Well, howdy folks. If you're seeing this, then that means the video is over and we've made it out of the canyon alive. Didn't get bit by a rattlesnake. Holy cow, what an adventure. And thank you as always for coming along with me and yeah, enjoying these trips, these outings, whatever you want to call them. I, I don't know, it's so cool that you guys dig these videos. Maybe you learn something and maybe you just like watching, but. It really does mean a lot to me and the more you guys like and comment and you know subscribe do the whole sharing thing it goes into this weird youtube algorithm and i guess it makes this channel grow i don't know and i can't say i care much about it but what i do care about is you know hearing what you guys have to say about these sort of adventures i really do like listening to comments and kind of going over and yeah having a conversation with you guys so if you don't want to do that come join us over on instagram come join us over on the discord especially it's always a hoot and a holler, having a good time, but folks, wherever you find yourself, be it in a pretty sweet canyon here in the great state of Idaho or in your backyard, I sure hope you keep those feet in the water, and until next time, tight lines.